Social media is very popular in today's world. Most people have three or four different apps on their phone that are some form of social media. And because of that, they can just reach out into their pocket and pull out their phone to access social media almost any time of the day. Even our own president is an avid user of social media. You see it all the time in the news about different things that have happened. And in fact, most people use social media to get their news or to communicate with other people. So needless to say, it's very prominent in today's world and it's a very big commodity. Being born in the 90s, I actually remember when social media kind of became prevalent in today's world. I remember when the few first apps came out that people started using, and I remember how quickly it grew, and now it's a part of my life that I struggle to remember what it was like before that. However, this does pose some problems in that I'm only 20 years old. So that means that the younger generations who are always going to have social media around them might face some complications that we have yet to actually find a solution for. So that's the problem with something like social media, is that we've never really seen it before and we don't know how it's going to affect the younger generations and how to solve the problems that we're already seeing appearing. So before we get into the solutions that I've discovered, let's talk about some research that has already been done into the effects of social media. One notable one is Charyon Sukmon Kal, who's a researcher at the National Institute for Development Association. He conducted a survey with some adolescents and teenagers, and he surveyed about 250 of them to get their thoughts and feelings on how social media is affecting them. He noted that there is in fact a positive relationship between those who use social media and feelings of social comparison and envy. He noted that they were more likely to compete among their friend groups or have negative feelings about themselves because of what they're seeing on social media. He also said that teenagers tend to gravitate towards a group that is highly susceptible to negative psychological and behavioral outcomes due to social media use. The next article that's worth mentioning was written by Sophia Chokas Bradley, who's from the Department of Psychology at the University of Pittsburgh. She decided to research what she calls appearance-related social media consciousness, which is basically how social media makes you feel about your appearance and how much you actually rely on social media to determine what looks good. She decided to interview and survey about 339 young women, and she gave them statements and asked them to rate how they felt about them on a scale of one to seven. Seven meaning it relates to them strongly and one meaning it does not relate to them at all. These would be things such as, when I go out, I feel distracted because of how photos are taking me and whether or not they'll be on social media. She found that about three quarters of the women actually experienced these kind of things very frequently. And this was in fact associated with the amount of time they spent on social media and also higher body surveillance, meaning that they saw more pictures of other people on social media and kind of compared themselves to those pictures. This is kind of alarming because it's very similar to the research that Charyon Sukhman Kohl occurred. So now that we know about the problems of social media and how it relates to feelings of envy and social comparison and just an overall negative effect on mental health in adolescence, how do we combat this issue? How do you find a solution to a problem that can be spread worldwide on social media platforms that almost everyone has access to? And while it's very difficult to regulate these platforms, there are a few solutions that can be very beneficial. So while this is a very widespread thing, the one group that does have control would be the parents. Parental intervention can be one of the most useful ways to combat the negative effects on mental health that are caused by social media. Since parents are one of the few groups that actually can regulate the amount of time a child spends on the platforms. One researcher who was very confident in this tactic was Jasmine Farduli. She found that adolescents and young adults that spend more time on social media can be linked with poor body image and more depressive symptoms. She then focused her research on how parental intervention can help to solve these problems. In her research, she actually referenced another article written by Brown and Tigerman, who stated, Parents controlling or reducing the amount of time a child spends on social media may result in the child being exposed to less content that might be harmful to their emotional health. 
This statement nicely supports the idea that parental intervention can be a great way to solve this problem. So to further solidify her point, Farduli went ahead and interviewed and surveyed 528 pre-adolescents and at least one of their parents in order to determine how effective parental intervention can be. She asked a variety of questions relating to their mental health, how they were feeling, the time the children spent on social media, and also the parents as to how much control they had over what their child did and how long they spent online. One of the most important findings that she discovered in her research was that more parental control over the time pre-adolescents spent on social media and less pre-adolescent time spent browsing social media were associated with pre-adolescents making less appearance-based comparisons while online. This is an excellent, excellent finding, meaning that she's actually found a way that can combat the issues that are caused by social media. As we've seen that when the parents do provide some sort of control, it is associated with less comparison. So while Farduli's research clearly shows how beneficial parental intervention can be and how it truly does work with adolescents, another great solution to this problem would be something that was mentioned by the Child Mind Institute, which is showing teenagers in some form how social media is not exactly what they perceive it to be. The majority of teenagers see things such as, oh, they look so great, their life must be perfect. However, Something brought up at Stanford was something known as the duck syndrome, which is where a person sees a duck gliding effortlessly across the water while their feet are paddling furiously to keep it afloat underneath, but they don't actually see that part. So another phenomenal solution would be to actually find a way, possibly by going into schools, to give adolescents some knowledge about that everything they see on social media is not necessarily indicative of what's happening in the real world and that they should not compare themselves to what they view as having no flaws. So while most of the aforementioned solutions are proactive, it's also important to talk about some of the reactive solutions at hand for these problems. As we've seen and has been proven by research, social media usage does in fact cause depressive symptoms and social comparison and envy in some adolescents. A great solution to this was proposed by Dr. Reddy who focuses his solution-focused therapy on dealing with depression in adolescents. Basically, solution-focused therapy is trying to find out what makes the person unhappy and then solving it. You do this such as asking them things such as, if you were to wake up tomorrow morning and all your problems were gone, what would be different? He used actually a 19-year-old college student in this experiment and research, and they had a hand D score, which basically levels, measures your level of depression, of over 20. And by the end of just a few short sessions, it was reduced by five points, which is a very big number on this scale. As is proven by his research, this is a great solution to dealing with some of the depressive symptoms that might be caused by social media usage. So now that we know about the solutions, let's talk about those who might say that social media is not necessarily a bad thing and that nothing needs to be fixed. A great example of this would be Emily Weinstein from the Harvard School of Education. She conducted a research study similar to what Charyan Sukhman called it, and what she found was that social media usage is more like a seesaw basically saying that some people have good experiences and others have bad, meaning that it should not necessarily be fixed in any way. However, this should not take away from those who have bad experiences. And in my opinion, if someone is having a negative experience, then there is something that needs to be solved and a solution that needs to be given for the problem. Anna Radovich from the Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh also had a positive viewpoint on social media usage in adolescents. She interviewed about 23 adolescents who had been diagnosed with depression and found that social media can actually provide them a positive outlet, such as comedy or creative content or just some form of entertainment. However, while some of these kids might have had a positive experience with social media, once again, it does not take away from those that have been found in multiple research studies to have had many terrible negative effects on their mental health from social media, which shows why these solutions need to be implemented in order to solve this problem. Through research, we know that social media usage is causing some negative and detrimental effects on a child's mental health and well-being, causing feelings of social comparison, envy, and depression. So something does need to be done about it.
this. And as we've seen, as been proven by research, parental intervention and solution-based therapy are excellent solutions to this. It has been proven by both researchers that it has had positive effects on children who have experienced these problems in their lives. While this is a relatively new problem, it's never too early to act on this. And it has been shown that we can do something about it.